Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about a cool little game I found on the internet. It's called Hellpoint. It is a Dark Souls-like game, and it is pretty, uh, it's pretty different. It's not like it's trying to be a direct copy or be the same game. It has some unique mechanics, some changes here and there. But obviously the combat and, like, progression and general feel of the game is very Dark souls but it's more than that, and it just had an awesome little DLC come out too today, so I kind of want to talk about it and let you guys know about its existence, because I feel like this game deserves a lot more love than what it gets. So the first thing you're going to notice about this game is that it takes place on a space station. You're literally like on some foreign space station that was developed for an experiment. And what inhabits the space station are a bunch of creatures and, like, demons and other humanoid things. It's got a real unique setting, almost like a, a sci-fi. A very, very sci-fi heavy setting. Which I find to be refreshing compared to all of the high fantasy magic, you know, medieval. Which I, I love those settings, don't get me wrong. But it is nice to have something a little different to uh, to explore, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's got all your different kind of weapon types. You got melee weapons, you got ranged weapons like guns, you got magic. So you got all different ways to kind of go about go about the gameplay, go about the combat and stuff. Which is also pretty, pretty refreshing to have access to, especially with, you know, just the way the setting is. You always kind of wonder how they're going to go about doing that kind of stuff you're so used to in other games that are very similar to this. And... You know, one of the things I liked the most about it that I found right away was different and unique was the, the healing system. So, when you consume a healing item, you know, it's gone, right? And you actually have to do melee damage or damage to an enemy, and this little circle fills up and gives you back a charge. So, basically, you have, a, like, a life leech in order to get back your healing pots, your healing potions, which... I find it to be a very unique mechanic that really I haven't seen any Souls-like game. I know other games kind of do it, like Path of Exile, where you know you use a flask and you have to kill stuff to get your flask filled up again. But I haven't seen it done in a game like this. And I think that's a neat little touch. It definitely prevents you from, you know, just going back to your AKA bonfire and healing up and then going back in. The respawning of enemies is very different too. So when you touch... The bonfires in this game, which they're not called that. They're called, like, a rift. Uh, the enemies do not respawn in the area. The enemies have, like, a respawn timer. So the longer you're in a zone, you're going to find out if you start backtracking, enemies are going to be behind you. So that's kind of nice. You can't really just sit there and farm enemies for souls, or in this case, it's called Axiom. And, you know, buff up your character. Which, like I said, is, is a refreshing take, because, you know... So many people in the Souls games would just, you know, farm an area for a while, get some levels, and move on. And one of the major complaints I have about the game, which this is just probably the way the game's designed, and, you know, it's not really a total hate on the game, but there's, there's platforming in the game, and there's a good bit of it, and it's really bad. It's really janky, and it really is rough. You're probably going to die more from the platforming than anything else. But once you kind of get a feel for how it how it works, even though it's really weird, you can kind of make it work. That's probably one of my major criticisms about the game is the, the platforming for it for sure. And the other thing I noticed right away was the unique death mechanic. So yeah, you die, you drop all your stuff, you know, well, you drop all your Axiom, which are souls. You got to go pick those up. <coughs> Typical, typical, you know, Dark Souls-like, Souls-like game. Well, the twitch, the, the twist is you have your ghost guarding them. So when you die, there's a phantom version of yourself with all the gear you were wearing when you died that's nearby. Now, you can run in there, grab your souls, and ignore your, you know, your ghost counterpart, or you can kill it. Do you get anything for killing it? No really but it allows you to kind of see how the ai plays your build and see how your build like works it's kind of weird it's it's neat it's like okay so how how strong is my build like in in an ai format like and you'll see the ai use it and they use it pretty well it's it's pretty smart it's pretty adaptive like you, 
it's definitely harder than a lot of the other enemies you fight in the game. So I find the fact that you leave a ghost there to fight and kind of guard your Axiom when it drops is, is pretty unique. And there are lots of boss fights in this game. The boss fights are pretty cool. They, they do become readable pretty quickly with their patterns and their movesets. And you can almost bait moves. Like, say I'm really close to an enemy, and if I'm really close and I'm to their side, they're going to do this rushing attack. If I keep doing that, nine times out of ten, if I do it the exact same way, I can bait that same attack. Now, this isn't foolproof, but it is kind of a... You can almost exploit it to make boss fights a little bit easier. But they are they got some cool bosses. There's a good amount of them. And you you will die on them. They're not they're not like cakewalks, I can tell you that. They are very um yeah, they're called breaches. I'm sorry, I said rift. But they're called breaches, and those are basically your bonfires. They allow you to spend your axiom to level up. They allow you to consume you find these little, like, Axiom cubes that give you more, kind of like the Souls in the Dark Souls games. And you can't teleport from every from every breach to every other breach. You actually have to synchronize the breaches to move about the world. And if you don't do that at the cost of, a, of an item, you literally have to walk everywhere. So you got to be kind of picky and choosy with which breaches you want to link up and which ones you don't. You got your standard stats, health, stamina, energy, equipment load, strength, reflex. Reflex is dexterity. Cognition and foresight. Cognition is guns, and foresight is magic or catalysts. But, you know, it's got the it's got the standard stats you would expect in a game of this nature, which a lot of people will feel right at home. The defenses are kind of unique. It's got a lot of different, like, other than just physical defense, it's got a lot of magical defenses that you wouldn't normally see in a game, which I find to be refreshing as well. Another unique thing I found out too, which I I was kind of shocked by this, because this is something I've never seen, is when you defeat bosses, it changes enemies in certain areas of the game. So this isn't a linear game. You can obviously bounce around from zone to zone and go places you're not supposed to go and fight things you're not supposed to fight. And if you go to an area before you kill a certain boss and then go back there's different enemies there the variety changes which i find not only increases replayability but just makes everybody's experience different and that is that is super cool that is super cool and of course there are lots of things to find lots of different weapons armors equipment items the enemies do have a drop table they drop what they have on them so if i'm killing an enemy with say a giant sword there's a chance they can drop that sword. They have really cool armor. There's a chance they can drop parts of that armor. So that's a really cool thing that I like about these kind of games is you can get what you see on an enemy. And I find that to be very enjoyable because I'm like, ooh, that armor set looks awesome. Or, oh, that weapon looks good. I'm going to keep killing you until I get it. Which, hey, you got to do what you got to do. Another thing that kind of comes with the territory that's a little bit of another criticism on the game is the environments, they can kind of feel samey. They feel very similar to one another. I mean, obviously you're on a space station, so how are you gonna... You can only get so creative with the environment, so I mean, it's bound to happen. They can be kind of bland, and all you see is different lighting. But hey, you know, they kind of try to change them up to a degree, so I'm gonna give them credit for that. But it is something that is a little bit of a negative in the game. And I'm going to tell you right now, the game feels like a Souls game. Like, for real, you got your dodge, you got your block, you know, you got your stamina, your health, your magic. The only thing is, it, it does feel, after playing a game like Elden Ring, I know, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. After playing a game like Elden Ring, it's very hard to not notice how budget this game feels and how it feels that definitely a AAA studio did not work on it. Does that mean it's bad? No. It just means you got to get used to it. It's not going to be as smooth. It's not going to be as fresh flowing. It's not going to feel as good. But it's going to do what you want out of a Dark Souls game. And that is give you that combat, that exploration feel, that progression feel, that sense of loss, that sense of accomplishment. It hits all those other check marks. It just, like I said, there's a little bit of a, you know, lack of polish, lack of fluidity. But that's just because they don't have the budget you know they don't have millions of dollars and that's okay you know we don't expect it's got a budget price 
you know, so it's all good in that regard. But that's my only other complaint about the game. And this game also has multiple endings, which, I mean, multiple endings obviously encourages replayability. Uh, certain quest lines, certain things you do guide you down a certain path. And that is super awesome as well. I find that to be very enjoyable. There is a weapon upgrade system in the game, just like other Souls games, games that are like this. You got your plus one, plus two. You can infuse them with different properties. So you can do a lot of customization and changing with the weapons, which I find to be which I find to be awesome. It's it's very refreshing and it keeps the game keeps your progress, the feeling of progress you get. It keeps that feeling like you're progressing. Oh wow, I got this weapon. Now it does this damage, or now it does that. You know, and then obviously if you do go the magic route. You know, you get, like, new spells. That's not really what they're called, but I'm just kind of making it so people understand what I'm saying. And that's always fun. And obviously, probably the biggest highlight of this game, which I wasn't expecting, is the co-op and multiplayer aspect. Now, the whole game can be played co-op with another person. You just join their lobby. It's really simple, really easy. You're playing with your buddy or a random person. You can go through the whole game start to finish co-op there's no there's no drop out there's no invaded by some dude there's no risk to co-op like oh no if we play co-op we're gonna get attacked by another player or the game's gonna like do some weird stuff literally it's like the games of the old days where you could just boot it up and play co-op with a buddy which is super awesome and you know if you enjoy pvp there is an arena pvp mode where you can test builds and play against other players which is super cool and like i said the thing that really shocked me is their split screen co-op in this game i have never heard of a game a souls like game with split screen co-op yeah you can literally plug in another controller and play couch co-op with a friend a family member whatever like and it works well. It maintains the frame rate. It maintains the performance. It's insane. This game is available on console and PC. It's on Xbox, PS5, and PC. So you can actually play split screen in the year 2022. I know. I know. I, I can't believe I'm saying that. But that is that is awesome. That is one of the number one reasons. If you're looking for a couch co-op game, get this game. Now, the DLC did come out the other day about july 12th i believe 2022 and what it does is it adds two-handed weapons to the game it adds new areas new armors new weapons new bosses new enemies the best part it's only a ten dollar dlc so you get a huge amount of content for 10 bucks and you know the price of the base game you can get this on sale the base game for about 10 to 15 bucks on sale retail price is about 30 to 40 even 30 to 40 isn't a bad deal if you want a good game. But if you want, you know, to get it on sale for 10, 15 bucks, hey, even better. Pick up the DLC for 10 bucks, boom. You're sitting good. So I, I do recommend this game. If you like Souls like games, if you are new to Souls like games and the only thing you played was Elden Ring and you want a different setting, a different scenario, different feel, pick this game up. You can't go wrong. And you know what? Honestly, if you're going to get it on Steam and you're on the fence, you got the refund policy. If you hate it, refund it. You know, you're out nothing. Obviously, console, you don't have that option unless you get it like a physical form, which I don't believe this is physical. It might be. It might have a limited physical release. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not up to snuff on that. But my goodness, it, it feels good. It it's, feels right at home. And it's nice to have a different setting and a different atmosphere. And you're easily going to get I'd wager 30 to 50 hours at least out of this game. So definitely pick it up. And if you're a person that likes to run different builds and go through the game again, bro, you're going to get so much more out of it. If, if you are a fan of Souls games, I recommend highly. And if you're a fan of co-op games, I recommend highly. And if you just need a co-op game to play with your buddies, your friends, you, you, can't, you can't go wrong. You really can't. So thank you all for checking out this little... Uh, I guess a little mini review, you could say, of Hellpoint. The Blue Suns DLC did just come out, and that is the the new DLC for the game. 
feel free to uh, ha ask any questions down in the comments below if you have any questions about the game, anything I didn't cover, like any systems or things that you may want to know about that you don't know exist that maybe, like I said, I didn't cover. Any questions you have about the game, if this video helped you out, I would really appreciate it if you left a like down below or, you know, just gave me a little bit of support. It means a lot to me. And uh, I hope to cover more of this game in the future and more games like it. So thank you guys for tuning in and checking out the video. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Peace, guys. Later.